The final day of development camp did not disappoint as the prospects put on a show with a scrimmage. Team Red versus Team White. Who came out victorious? Who shined? And who exceeded my expectations? We have a lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now. What is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked on Devils podcast here on Locked on Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play play announcer, Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential MIA member, Trey Matthews. Today was the final day of development camp, and it concluded with the prospects competing in a scrimmage, red versus white. So I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on the scrimmage momentarily, and I was also able to obtain a lot of sound bites post-game in the locker room, and I also had the chance to speak with uh, Megan Duggan, who's in charge of the development for the Devils organization. Before we get into all of that, the Devils did actually make a signing during the course of the scrimmage. It was revealed that they had signed Chris Tierney to a one-year two-way deal. Now, the thing is, is that this is obviously more of a move for the Utica Comets because I heard that they needed more depth at the center position, but also people are kind of speculating that the job security of Michael McLeod might be in question. I personally think it's more of a move for the Utica Comets. I don't have any more information on Michael McLeod and his scandal. I'm sure we're going to talk more about it in a future episode, but I certainly don't want to speculate on a topic that I don't have much information for. So for the time being, I'm seeing this more as a move for the Comets once again. And we'll talk more about Chris Tierney in a future episode, but this is going to be my final episode for the next few days because I'm actually going on a trip to Europe. Uh, My flight's going to leave in a few hours, so I got limited time to uh, record this episode and post it. But you guys deserve one last episode before I go off to Europe for uh, a mini vacation. So let's talk about development camp and this scrimmage. So once again, it was Team Red versus Team White, and Team White came out victorious by a score of four to three. Xavier Perron was able to score. He scored the first goal of the game for Team White. Then Cam Recchi, who is the son of Mark Recchi, was able to tie it up quickly. Cole Brown also scored. And it's worth mentioning that this all happened within the first 10 minutes of the scrimmage. So I thought to myself that this was going to be an offensive-minded game, but it really uh, started to settle down once uh, the game progressed because after those 10 or so minutes, the defense really started to pick up. So once again, it was mostly offense to begin the game, but then I guess the rookies started to get their feet underneath them. The nerves started to fizzle on out, and then it was a more competitive hockey game because my prediction going into the matchup was that we were just going to see an absolute barn burner. A lot of players were going to score. I thought I would see a hat trick, but no, uh, the Cam Squires was able to tie it up by going bar down with five minutes remaining in the first half. And then Brendan Fitzgerald was able to score within the final seconds to recapture a lead for team white. Obviously he is the son of Tom Fitzgerald and he's also the cousin of all the Kachuk brothers. So huge discrepancy in terms of how the game was able to progress and how this game was formed was that there were two 25 minute halves with a running clock. And if there was ever a penalty during the course of the matchup, which there weren't, it wouldn't result on either team going on the penalty kill or on the man advantage, it will result in a penalty shot, which I found very intriguing. I thought that was really exciting. And to start off in, in netminder for Team Red, it was Isaac Poulter. And then for Team White, it was Cole Brady. So when the second half began, the defense started to pick up once more because after the first 10 or so minutes, there was nothing really to write home about. But I was really impressed with the defensive efforts from both Seamus Casey and Chase Cheslock during the course of this game because what I noticed from Casey was that he was trying to join in on the rush. He sort of reminded me of Luke Hughes, and coincidentally, they both are from the University of Michigan, so it seemed like uh, Casey was playing more of a forward as opposed to a defenseman, but he was still holding down his fort on the blue line for Devils, so I think a lot of you are really excited for the development of Casey because he sees himself as a two-way player, and then once again, Cheslock was able to impress me as well. The one thing I said for Cheslock is don't expect too much offensive production, but he is capable of doing so because he was able to score 
a lot during high school, but when he was with the Omaha Lancers, it was more defensive minded. And then towards the end of the game, Samu Salomon was able to tie it up for team red. And then Cole Brown scored his second goal to recapture the lead for team white. And like I said, team white came out victorious. So once again, this scrimmage was actually quite compelling to watch. There was a lot of offensive surgeons, but at the same time, the defense was able to balance it out. Wasn't the most exciting or uh, thrilling game to observe, but obviously these guys are prospects. It's hard to build that chemistry within a week. And I think they played pretty well for the amount of time that they had to try to uh, get ready for the scrimmage. But a lot of prospects were able to put on a show and try to punch their ticket into the NHL or at least put their foot in the door and get some of the development staff and also some of the scouts on notice as to why maybe they deserve to be a part of the Devils' plans in the not-so-distant future. So the first prospect that I want to touch on is Santeri Hataka. Now, Hataka was obviously involved in the Timo Meyer deal, and I don't think a lot of people were really talking about him. He's a left-handed defenseman. He was drafted by the Sharks back in 2019 in the sixth round. Last season, while playing with San Jose Barracuda, he appeared in eight games. He had two points, which was the result of two assists. And the year prior, he appeared in 41 games. He had three goals, nine assists for a grand total of 12 points. And he actually has played in the NHL. So uh, a couple of seasons ago, he appeared with the San Jose Sharks for nine games and he put up two assists. So he's had a cup of coffee in the NHL. And I think a lot of people find him to be quite interesting because Tom Fitzgerald had high praise for him during the development camp. So I had the chance to ask Hataka a couple of questions in the locker room. One-on-one, -on -one, I went back to the trade, what his initial reaction was like, how he's getting accustomed to Utica, and what are his expectations going forward. Here's what Hataka had to tell me post-game. So I just want to go back a few months uh, when you were traded from San Jose to the Devils organization. I just wanted to get your, uh, your, your thought on it, like uh, what went through your mind when you realized you were going to be traded to the Devils organization. Of course, it was a huge shock when I heard about the news, but uh, it was, of course, like I was super exciting and happy to get traded and I get a great organization, one of the best in the league right now. And uh, they battling on the Stanley Cup like every every single year. So, uh, yeah, I was I was happy. How is the adjustment going from Barracuda to now Utica? Uh, it was pretty same. It was pretty same. Uh, uh, of course, I didn't play with Utica, but uh, like everything there was, uh, it was super smooth to go there, and uh, like all the people there was super nice for me, and the boys were good, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was super super smooth. How has this uh, week of development camp gone from your perspective? Uh, it's been a fun week, fun week. Uh, I have seen a lot of boys here, get to know everyone, and uh, staff and uh, trainers, everyone like being so so nice to me and like it's been a fun week so what are some of the goals you have uh, going into the season um of course i i come to the, the mentality to the training camp i want my spot from the team and uh compete from that that spot and uh, i want to take that for anyone who might be unfamiliar with your game how would you describe it um fast skater will park well uh, good on the d zone can play on the o zone too Two, two AD. And uh, just get just playing in that scrimmage, suiting up in the Devils uniform. Just wanted to get uh, your thoughts on that. Uh, it's, it's great to be in new colors. I like the red. So one of the prospects that I talked about in the first segment was Brendan Fitzgerald, who is the son of Tom Fitzgerald and also the cousin of the Kachuk brothers. So the thing about Brendan Fitzgerald is that he is a left-handed defenseman, similar to Hataka. He is 20 years of age, and he last played for the Cedar Rapids Rough Riders of the USHL. He appeared in 43 games. He had three goals, 21 assists for a grand total of 24 points. So, like I mentioned, he was able to score in the scrimmage, and he did it in front of his father. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's nepotism. Well, Fitzy is trying to prove to his father once again why maybe he deserves to be a part of the Devils roster. Obviously, that would be a bit of a long shot, and I think it, uh, getting Fitzgerald added to uh, the Devils' system is more to help the Utica comments. But here's what Fitzgerald had to tell me. His uh, Brendan Fitzgerald, not Tom Fitzgerald, uh, had to tell me in the locker room shortly after the game. 
So you were able to score in this uh, scrimmage. What was going through your mindset when uh, you found the back of the net? Um, it, it was cool. Um, all the all the forwards, like Brownie, got it up and he went right to the net. And I, I think he actually got a tip on it. But it, it was cool to score in this building in front of the Devils fans. And yeah, it, it was awesome. Not only are you performing in front of the fans, you're also performing in front of your father. So how did that just feel knowing that he's watching you score w while in the Devils uniform? Um, I, I assume he was excited. It's probably cool for him, you know, being with the Devils organization and seeing me with the jersey on score. And uh, it was cool. It was a cool moment. For anyone who might be unfamiliar with your game, how would you describe it? I'd say I'm a transition defenseman. So I like uh, breaking out pucks and making good first touches and yeah, just making it easy for the forwards. What are your expectations going into the season? What are some of the goals you have for yourself? Um, I think just getting in a good uh, top four role for me would be would be awesome, and, and playing and and earning my role and really getting the confidence I need to, to excel my game. How did you like this week of development camp? Can you describe it from your perspective? Yeah, it was it was an awesome week. Just um, you know, being in the in the shoes of the pros for a week was something. That is probably one of the coolest moments of my life so far. And all the stuff we did off ice was, was just as, um, you know, cool and inspiring as the stuff we did on the ice. And I'd say our time at West Point was, was my favorite part of the week. You know, doing, seeing what those guys go through, guys and girls go through every day, it was, it was awesome. What was working for you? What wasn't working for you? Just wanted to get your perspective on that. Yeah, like, like on the ice? Yeah. Um, it, it's a very fast game, especially with all these talented players. So um, I think just, just moving pucks quick and, you know, knowing what you're going to do with the puck before you get it was the biggest thing and, and really being prepared for anything. What are some of the improvements you're going to make this upcoming season? I think my, my skating can always improve. That, that's, that's definitely something that I want to work on every day and I, and I will work on. Um, my shot, I want to I have a lethal shot from the point, so I'm going to continue to work on that. And... Yeah, just, just get better every day and compete. So a couple of prospects that a lot of people were excited to see during development camp was Cam Squires and Seamus Casey. Now, I've already talked about Casey and how I was impressed with his defensive efforts during the game. And I also was able to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with Cam Squires a couple episodes ago in the locker room. If you haven't checked it out, please pause this episode and do so. So I had the chance to speak with them once again in the locker room and get their thoughts as to how development camp went. How satisfied were they with their performance during the scrimmage and their expectations going into uh, next year? Because if my memory serves me well, uh, Cam Squires last played for the Cape Breton Eagles. And I think the plan for him is to go back to the QMJHL. And also for Casey, he's going to be heading back to Ann Arbor to suit up for the Wolverines once again. So uh, here's what Squires and Casey had to say post game in the locker room so I'm going to play the sound bite first for Squires and then for Casey check it out so you just completed your first scrimmage in a devil's uniform how was the overall feeling that was good it was a lot of fun I mean you know getting out there and just being able to compete uh, at a high level you know see everybody uh, you know new line mates and stuff new players uh, just making a connection right off the bat uh, learning to adapt and play with speed was, was a lot of fun my audience has nothing but positive things to say about you. How did you feel about the fan reception these last uh, couple days while in the practice facility? Yeah, it was huge. I mean, the fans and organization here is so great. Uh, you know, nothing but a great first experience for me. Uh, the staff is beyond, you know, unreal for us here. You know, they're at a disposal. They, they want us to get better. Uh, you know, for me, just taking all the resources and using them moving forward is huge. Uh, you know, good people, uh, a lot of good coaches around. So just picking their brains and, you know, using that to get better. How satisfied were you with uh, your overall uh, game during the scrimmage? What was working for you? What wasn't working? Yeah, I think it was just, you know, getting that first shift and getting the jitters out the way. You know, it's the first, you know, high level, a lot of camp. Guys are competing. I think just playing with speed, uh, playing my game. I uh, had a lot of fun just, you know, at the end of the day, it's just hockey. So just playing with skill, use my skills, uh, making plays, and then, you know, being able to get a goal there was huge. What are some of the improvements you want to make to your game this upcoming year? Yeah, just continue to get stronger and faster. I mean, yeah, that's huge in the gym in the summertime, uh, putting on some weight and, you know, let myself grow. But then I think just being dominant, uh, you know, poised with the puck and, you know, protecting it a lot better and, and using my teammates and stuff. And then, you know, a lot of giving goes. And, and I feel, you know, point production should be there. But I want to, you know, be that 200-foot overall defensive player as well. 
how satisfied were you with uh, your overall uh, performance during the scrimmage? What was working, was what wasn't working? Because it seemed like a lot of people were satisfied with your performance. Yeah, I think you know it's it's July, so hockey like some of the the habits and stuff like you you go from training mode to playing a five on five game. It's uh, you know it's a little different. Um, so first first bit there, just kind of getting some uh, some rust out, but. It was a ton of fun. Um, I really loved, you know, playing with uh, that group of guys. I think, uh, you know, there was some really good stuff offensively. Maybe a little bit too aggressive at times. Um, you know, got to get back into those good, like, smart hockey habits. But you know, that'll come. Um, for now, just keep focusing on training and getting better, and not to worry about the game habits for now. I just got uh, to ask you this because I'm a Michigan guy. So, um, what's it like seeing Luke Hughes, Maddie Beniers, Owen Power? all former Michigan guys uh, now playing at the NHL level, and uh, how do you hope to follow in their footsteps? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously really encouraging. You know, you hope to be able to follow. Like, they're unbelievable players, so just to be able to follow their footsteps someday would be uh, incredible. And, you know, just talking to those guys are obviously, you know, really nice down-to-earth guys. And, like, I play with Luke, so I'm pretty close with him. And, uh, you know, I, I know Maddie And, um, yeah, it's, it's cool, like, you know, to see, like, how close you, you know, it's like so close so far type of thing like you're right there but there's still a ton of work that needs to be put in obviously but you know if things go right and you just keep working hard like it's all uh, obtainable okay so development camp is now in the books I'm sure you're focused on getting back to Ann Arbor to get ready for another uh, season so what are your uh, expectations uh, going into the new college year honestly like expectations are I don't know I, I don't keep a ton of personal expectations like I, I try to get as, as good as I can before the year starts. I work as hard as I can, and I try to, you know, fix fix problems that I had the year before, and then I come in and just play play the best I can. And, you know, as far as everything goes, like, it's really just team expectations. I expect have a really competitive group. Um, you know, we, I, we have a lot of good guys coming in and a lot of good guys staying. So, you know, I expect us to go far, um, you know, with our coaching staff and how dialed we're going to be. Like, I only expect good team things, and then, you know, if the team does well, I do well. So that's all that matters. Before we continue with today's episode, let me tell you guys about a product that I use literally every day. So I started taking AG1 because I wanted to be happier. I wanted to be healthier. My body is a temple and I got to start treating it as such. So I drink AG1 before I record an episode, before I head to the gym, before I head to work, wherever the case might be. AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. AG1 replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and more in one simple drinkable habit. Science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source nutrients, AG1 is the raising standard for quality in the supplement category. AG1 helps you build your health foundation first. So if a comprehensive solution is what you need from a supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. Check it out. And now, I know it's hot during the summer and you guys want to look stylish while at the same time keeping uh, your body cool and, and collected. So let me tell you about Bird Dogs. So Bird Dogs makes you look good and their stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon. They fit way better than regular shorts. Bird Dogs fix the, uh, the issue of stiff, restricting cotton by inventing a cloud knit fabric that looks just like khakis, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So you know the drill. You have to go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL or enter the promo code locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash NHL network or promo code locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take off your bird dogs once you receive them. I promise you. Okay, so to close out the final episode of my development camp series, I had the chance to speak with Megan Duggan. She was one of the coaches during development camp, and she is the director of player development for the Devils organization. And as some of you might have already been aware, she is a former professional hockey player. She played in the PHF. She has played for the Boston Pride, the Buffalo Buttes, and she uh, is a former Wisconsin Badger. She is a gold medalist in the 2018 Olympic Games, and she's won many gold medals in the World Championships. So what you need to know about Megan is that she is the real deal, and she is really good, especially when it comes to just trying to 
find that young talent and try to craft their skills. So I had a chance to speak with her during her media availability shortly after the scrimmage. Here's what she had to share. How did it go? Yeah, great week, great week. I think we ended here on an awesome note. Obviously a nice game for, for the fans and all the staff that's here. But, um, you know, we asked the guys, the group of 33 guys that were here, we asked them at the beginning of the week to just show up and uh, with intention and purpose every day. Um, you know, and that's those are the standards we're setting in our organization, and that's exactly what they did. Um, it was an awesome group of guys, and um, we had a really fun week. How much of an experience like a development camp is not just about the online stuff, but also understanding what is expected as a New Jersey Devil? Yeah, it's a huge piece of it. Honestly, I'd say it's it's 50% of, of um, you know, 50% on ice, 50% off ice. We had them do all sorts of stuff, as, as the media saw, you know, on Twitter and Instagram and all that. But, um, yeah, that's a big part of it. Learn what it's what it means to be here, right? Whether that's serving your community. We went to Barnabas Hospital. Whether that's the trip to West Point, learning about leadership and sacrifice and teamwork and commitment and how to compete um you know and then the off ice nutrition aspect and mental performance and sleep you know we provided these guys with resources um this week that i think is really going to help them in their young pro careers and it'll be about which ones want to take advantage of that right um, and take advantage of the opportunity to get better and um with this group we had here this week of great guys i think a lot of them will how nice is it watching these guys develop? Because you get them when they're so young, 18 years old, and some guys it's their second, third camps, and watching them grow as players every year that they come back. Yeah, honestly, it's my favorite part of the job. <laughs> like, that's why I love this job. Like, the opportunity to work with these kind of young, um, untainted, kind of eyes open uh, players at this point in their career. Some of them now, you know, I'm going into my third season here, and I've had the opportunity to work with these guys since I've been here. And so, building those relationships, watching them change, you know, their bodies grow, um, their game change. Um, it's it's the best part of the job, honestly. Is there anybody that you saw this year that maybe you saw last year that you saw, uh, really saw a lot of growth in them from year to year or maybe even someone new? Yeah, you know what? Um, Josh Philman, I think, has been a, been a, a really good player for us. Um, he, he came into to, you know, rookie camp and dev camp and main camp last year after being drafted and open some eyes you know he's, he's got a big body he's got a great um, knack for scoring goals he handles the puck well he moves well uh, scored 47 goals in the Western League this year and we challenged him you know you got to get bigger you got to get stronger last year and um, he was responsive to that so he showed up he's gone up and everything and um, he emerged as a leader here this week which is also what, what we want to see so uh, there's a lot of a lot of guys making changes and um, doing what we ask but uh, he's a good example of it throughout yeah, I mean, really happy with, um, with the guys we, we dropped. We just drafted a couple <laughs> weeks ago. You know, you look at the game we just had. You got Brownie gets two goals and Cam gets one. And um, thought Chase Cheslock looked excellent. You know, Lenny's had an awesome week. Um, so kudos to our amateur staff um, and all the work that they did bringing those guys into our organization. We had meetings with all four of those guys last night as part of our, you know, standard um, player meetings at camp and just all positive stuff, you know, giving them um, kudos for what they did here this week and encouraging them to keep working on their game and talking to them about how we'll be in touch quite a bit uh, as we move forward here. Throughout the week, uh, what impressed you the most from these uh, prospects? Um, yeah, like I said when I started, I mean, um, and a few of us mentioned it to the players in our camp wrap-up, um, just a great group of guys. Um, you know, we've been around, I've been around a lot of different teams, obviously, you know, a few different camps here in New Jersey and different athletes, but um, this was a special group, I think. They were really, what impressed me the most, honestly, how respectful and professional and, and mature they went about their business. Um, and, and that goes a long way, you know, how they treat the staff, how they engage in the community how dialed in they were at West Point yesterday in a, in a pretty special day and an unforgettable experience for them. Um, so that was uh, what I, I love seeing the most. You mentioned a little... Is he someone that you're, you guys are seeing projecting as, you know, potentially an NHL player? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, you know, we just talked about his game a little bit and areas that, that he's going to keep working on and improving. But, um, you know, we, you guys saw we signed him at the end of this, this season and um, he's able to come over to Utica at the end of the season and learn a bit, be around the pro guys. So, um, yeah, he's definitely a player, you know, we, we value in this organization. We're excited to keep working with him and, and see where his game can go. You mentioned it a little bit to Sam before, but just what do you get out of this, you know, personally <laughs> from an experience like this? Yeah, it's it's awesome. <laughs> Honestly, we got a great group of staff here. Um, this is an all hands on deck event. You know, we start planning it uh, late, late winter, early spring, and 
everyone has a piece in it, whether it's the office staff, the development staff, the, you know, medical, and um, and uh, I just love, I love everyone coming together. I love all the staff being a part of the ev events. You know, we were at West Point yesterday. We got staff up <laughs> on the leader reaction course, going through the obstacles. So um, great week to just build relationships, right? We asked the players to come in and, and form connections with each other and the staff, but also the staff, like some of us that are out in the field, um, you know, not everyone's in New Jersey all the time. We don't get the opportunity to be together. and. Um, you know, we're grinding out in the field to bring these these guys in here and, and so the opportunity to come together, spend some time together, build those relationships and uh, put something really special together for the players is, is awesome. Like, awesome. As, uh, like development is a year long process, not just this week. A lot of these guys go back to their college teams or their junior teams. What's the balance like, you know, working with them, developing them, but also not wanting to step on like their current coaches toes? and. and yeah, I think for us, you know, like we have uh, each each player is assigned a, a assigned a development coach that really kind of owns their development in their case. And yeah, it's different if the guys in college or junior. There's different restrictions, but what we do is try to work in tandem with all their stakeholders, right? Their coaches, their off ice trainers, their agents, their families. So, um, you know, we use Eric Weinrich for an example, working with players like Luke and and Seamus, um, you know, over the last year at, at Michigan and Ethan Edwards and. Um, you know, he goes into town, we, we watch games, obviously, report on players, provide feedback, but we sit down with coaches, go through video at Michigan, he takes the guys out for breakfast, um, you know, helps with, with mindset and professionalism and habits and, and is a mentor too. So, um, you know, we have some really great development coaches in, in place to be excellent mentors for these guys um, at, at the critical stage in their career. And um, so we're just working on that more. With As a... As a former professional athlete, what lessons and teachings do you get from your uh, playing days and try to translate it to these uh, prospects? To me, um, you know, as a player, um, my motto was always uh, it's just compete. And, and that's something that Fitzy stresses with our guys. Like I, whether it was on the ice, off the ice, whether it was washing my car, like the details, the work ethic, like. It, it matters. It matters at every level, but at this level. You know, we had a couple players come in, young players. This is their first time playing pro at this camp, and they're like, wow, these guys are big and strong and fast, right? <laughs> and and so um, the compete is the number one thing I look for when I'm looking at players, when I'm evaluating, um, and you can see it right off the bat. So that's something that we stressed a lot with these players last week, and I think will help them, you know, in their future pro careers. Your outlook for him next season. Yeah, yeah, you know what, Tyler now coming in um, after a, a great year in, in Prince George and, um, you know, he, he got to the end of the season and really earned that starting spot in, in playoffs for his team out there. Unfortunately, had a, had a small, like, injury at the end of the season. But, um, but yeah, you know, he, he showed up at camp. He's a, a you know, bigger, stronger, m more mature kid. Um, I thought he was more, you know, engaged in the pro game and um, he's a great prospect for us. So. We're excited to keep following him. We got an awesome goalie staff and, and group that you know maintains great connections with those guys. So um, we were obviously excited to sign him and, and bring him into the organization um, at the end of last season. And it'll be great for us to have him over over here this way uh, this year. Hey, what is it you're looking for for players that you invite to camp and specifically Andre Seneca, I believe. Uh, what did you see out of a, a, a really big yeah. player like him? What did you not see in that kid? He's a six-five, you know, power forward from Cornell. Andre was actually a guy, um, you know, our, our scouting staff and our, our uh, kind of head of player performance noticed last year prior to Dev Camp in his um, whatever year that was for him at Cornell. We invited him to development camp last year, and unfortunately right before he got, he got mono. So he was still on our radar. Um, you know, we had seen him a lot this season. As you guys know, we got, we got coaches and scouts out everywhere watching these guys. So, um, you know, he's a, he's a big, strong power forward, and that, that, is a, that is a role that every team needs, right? But he's got good skill, too. Uh, I thought he had a great game today. He stood out to a lot of us, and uh, we'll look forward to, you know, continuing to watch him um, at Cornell this upcoming season. So I hope you guys enjoyed my mini series of development camp. It was a lot of fun to come back to Prudential Center, actually cover a game, get to know some of these rookies, speak to them in the locker room. And it was just a really great experience. And I, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I had so much fun doing it. And this scrimmage honestly was better than I anticipated. Like I said, in segment one, wasn't the most exciting game, but at the same time, these prospects are just trying to get their feet wet. They're trying to punch their ticket to the NHL. So I kept my expectations somewhat moderate. And like I said, in next week's episode, which will be a little later in the week, I'll talk about Chris Tierney 
and my expectations for him and his track history. We'll talk about Akira Schmidt. Should he remain in the AHL or is he ready to become the backup for the Devils? And I have some more exit interviews that I can break down because I haven't talked about Dougie Hamilton. I haven't talked about Dawson Mercer. There's so much uh, sound bites that I can share on this show that I haven't gotten to yet. Going to bring some journalists onto my show, but for the time being, I will be in Europe for the next few days. So I'm taking a little bit of a break from podcasting. Just a full disclaimer, but I will be back late next week with some new episodes. So like I do to close out every episode, continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.